has filled Delhi residence with terror. Well, what I'm seeing is a lot of very, very frightened people, as you know. In the year 610 AD on a rocky mountain overlooking Mecca, a 40-year-old man named Muhammad was reflecting on the purpose of life. After years of deep thinking and meditation, he began to receive divine revelation. The revelations that he received is called the Quran, a divine book which came from the same source as the Torah sent to Moses and the gospel which was given to Jesus Christ. The relationship between the Qur'an and the previous revelations is that of a clarifier and explainer. The Qur'an comes from the same source as is illustrated in the Qur'an and even in those previous revelations that prophesied the coming of Muhammad and the Qur'an itself. To this day, the Qur'an continues to be the key source of guidance for billions of followers. People from all walks of life adopt the way of the Qur'an through the example of Muhammad. Because of the profound and holistic nature of the Quranic text, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had the task of explaining it to his followers and his companions. And these explanations of Prophet Muhammad are compiled in what's known as the Sunnah. The relationship between the Quran and Sunnah is a relationship of paints to a brush. The Quran brings universal general colors which are painted in the lives and hearts of people by the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So the Quran orders us to pray, it orders us to fast, it orders us to pray charity, and the Quran even mentions fighting in the cause of God. All of those are depicted and illustrated by the Sunnah which paints those general universals into the lives of people. The Sunnah provides guidelines needed by humanity for any issues that one may face. From fine aspects of life like basic daily activities such as matters of health and hygiene to the forming and running of a government. What became the most controversial of all these teachings is a concept known as Jihad. In today's world, people from a wide range of cultures have different understandings about the term jihad. The word jihad comes from the Arabic root jihad, which means doing extra effort. So linguistically, the word jihad, we can say that it means striving and struggling. The word jihad in the Muslim world actually carries with it a very positive connotation. I have a number of friends uh, in Egypt as well as other countries. Their names are jihad. I even know some small beautiful girls with apple, apple rosy, apple cheeks. Their names are jihad. And even when you go to take an exam, for example here, and you're struggling, they'll tell you make jihad. So the word jihad actually for the, the majority of Muslims carries with it the sense of struggle and strife against oneself in order to improve their lot and, and draw nearer to God. Islamically, it has three meanings or levels. The first one is spiritual jihad, inner struggle against evil inclinations, and the pursuit of self-purification and life of virtue. You struggle against your own ego, against your inclinations, your evil inclinations, and your desires to live 
a better life and to attain sincerity. It encompasses every aspect of the person's life, from being good to one's wife or husband, being good to one's children, kind to one's neighbor, speaking the truth in front of the oppressor, waking up and praying in the middle of the night. All of this is encompassed under that internal drive, that hard drive that pushes the Muslim, which is called spiritual jihad. One of the aspects of Islam is charity. When Muslims give charity, they're supposed to keep this between them and their creator and not to tell anybody. This is to stop them from showing off. It's very difficult not to tell anybody. For this, you need jihad. Prophet Muhammad promised paradise for the person who spends in charity with the right hand while the left hand is unaware of it, which is a metaphor for spending in charity secretly with sincerity in order to protect the integrity of one's intention. The poor people of Medina were receiving supplies to their doors at the darkness of the night, and they did not discover who was bringing them until he passed away. And that was Imam Ali Zin al Abidin, the great grandson of Prophet Muhammad. Until this day, many Muslims are following the footsteps of those great early Muslims. So profound is that experience that we find countless examples of American Muslims and Western Muslims and Muslims the world over engaged in sacrifice, such selfless sacrifice to help others. In America during the Katrina hurricane, I remember when I went to Houston, Texas, before the government had agreed to subsidize people, a Muslim man had donated his hotel, free rooms for victims of the hurricane uh, Katrina. That all falls under that massive mechanism known as jihad al-nafs or spiritual jihad. The second meaning of jihad is verbal jihad, which is saying the truth, even if it's against one's interests. In some countries, when people say the truth, they can end up in jail. In many countries around the world, saying the truth is a big risk to one's freedom or even one's life. Standing for justice and saying the truth is considered verbal jihad. What is the position of Islam on this point? Does Islam tell you to keep quiet, to be safe? No. Islam tells you to stand up for the truth, enjoin what's good and forbid what is evil, even if you are risking your life. Because we all have to die, and it is better to die with dignity so that future generations will benefit. Civil rights activists who speak against tyranny and oppression are actually performing verbal jihad, uh, which actually has a big impact on the reform of any society. And this is encouraged by Prophet Muhammad in many statements. He said, the best form of jihad is the word of truth in the presence of a tyrant. Throughout history, the greatest instrument of change has not been weapons, nuclear bombs, guns, murder, harming people. The greatest weapon of change has been the tongue. Throughout history, how many societies, how many people's lives have been impacted by someone who had the courage and, and, and the willpower to rise up and speak the truth? For that reason, Islam considers speaking the truth as one of the greatest forms of struggle. And it is in that light, if we look at our own history, that we've seen without the tongue, there would have been no change. Where would the civil rights movement be if Martin Luther King had never stood up and said, let freedom ring, let freedom ring? In that same, same pulse, the Muslims are encouraged to stand up and say, let freedom ring, let the truth ring, and speak to power and oppression. However, when the word jihad is mentioned in non-Muslim societies, it is not the spiritual nor the verbal type that comes to people's minds. It is the third meaning that causes great concern. This is combative jihad. Combative jihad is definitely the type of jihad which has caused the concept itself of jihad to be by far the most misunderstood Islamic concept. That's why we have to focus a lot on this type of jihad the combative jihad, and explain the reality of it to both Muslims and non-Muslims. Combative jihad has to be the most misunderstood subject within the Muslim world and, and with outside, outside of the Muslim world. 
And I think that's due to a number of reasons. Number one is that people fail to realize that the majority of rulings that surround combative jihad came from the works of legal scholars and judges throughout history. The Quran and Sunnah laid down universals for combat, but those universals were dictated, understood, and defined over time. So what might have been fitting for a certain age is not necessarily fitting for this age. Number two is the actions of Muslims themselves, those Muslims who have taken upon themselves to act uh, uh, without any regard for human life, without respecting those principles laid down by the Quran and Sunnah and by Islam itself, and, and have actually done more to harm the religion and Muslims than to help them. Number three is the ignorance of the media and the ignorance of the people in general about Islam. Uh, I have a very good friend who works for CNN. And I asked her one time, Do, does the media like hate Muslims? Does the media have problems with Muslims? She said, no, they don't know Muslims. Muslims are not out there actively engaging them and teaching them about their religion. So I think those are three very important factors. And the fourth would be a long history of problems between the West and the East that really, really hasn't come to boil uh, since recently with the explosion of communications, the internet, and so on. Those four things have really led to a misunderstanding of jihad. Use of the word jihad has changed dramatically. During the 1980s, mainstream media labeled the mujahideen or jihadists as freedom fighters. Less than two decades later, media outlets are distorting the meaning of jihad to describe terrorists. On the 24th of December, 1979, the first divisions of the Soviet armed forces crossed the Amu Dharma River, invading Afghanistan. This is a callous violation of international law and the United Nations Charter. It is a deliberate effort of a powerful atheistic government to subjugate an independent Islamic people. Jihad was now declared against the Soviet Union. In Kandahar, 4,500 Mujahideen wage war against 11,000 Soviet and Afghan army troops. Because of the abuse of the word jihad by the media and by politicians. The word jihad became very negative in the West. Actually, it scares people, it makes people panic to the extent that some young people who were arrested for having some engagement in violence were indicted and their indictments were that they are planning to do jihad. And this reflects a very poor understanding uh, of the word. In fact, not only the word jihad was misused, many words were used contrary to their meanings. For example, the word crusade. The word crusade means struggle against public evil, but because it was used to describe waves of destructors and bloody wars, now it has a very negative connotation. When people hear the word crusade, the only thing that jumps to their minds is greed, destruction, uh, occupation. That's why it is our role now to go out to, whole, to the whole world and explain the reality of the concept of jihad.